These are not rare diseases. These affect 1 to 2 percent of our population. There are millions of people with these debilitating autoimmune diseases. Welcome to Arthritis Now. I'm Britt Johnson, and today we're talking to Dr. Carl Ware, who is the chairman of the Scientific Advisory Board at the Arthritis National Research Foundation. He's also professor and head of the Infectious and Inflammatory Disease Center in the Laboratory of Molecular Immunology at Sanford Burnham Previs Medical Institute in La Jolla, California. Today we'll be learning from Dr. Carl Ware about his research in immunology and his research in viruses, but specifically how he's learned a little bit about arthritis and other autoimmune diseases from looking at the herpes virus. To start out, do you mind just telling us how long you've been on the Scientific Advisory Board and kind of what your role is with the Arthritis National Research Foundation? It's been at least 10 years that I've been participating on the Scientific Advisory Board and uh, as chairman of that Scientific Advisory Board and then as a general member of the Arthritis National Research Foundation. Can you tell us what the Scientific Advisory Board does for the ANRF and how they go about selecting research? The overall mission of the Arthritis National Research Foundation is to identify and provide the initial funding for promising young scientists that are going to dedicate their careers to studying arthritis and related autoimmune diseases to bring therapies forward. And this is where our organization has been extremely successful in that regard. Well, across the nation, we solicit applications for research ideas, and we have a grant deadline. And the Scientific Advisory Board, we review all the grants that are submitted to us, and then we rank order them based on our experience. And I will tell you that the Scientific Advisory Board consists of about 10 scientists, all of which are nationally recognized as leaders in the arthritis and autoimmune disease research field. This is the credibility of, of our foundation. Absolutely, and, and the strength of it. What sort of research has the ANRF funded so far that has led to some known sort of therapies or research? Well, probably one of the foremost was the funding of uh, Dr. Gail Granger's research a couple of decades ago, which helped lead to the development of what are now known as TNF inhibitors and led to the development of these inhibitors to change the course of uh, many patients with rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis and inflammatory bowel disease. That's one of the major success stories, but there are dozens of others um, that have led to an enhancement of our fundamental understanding of how the immune system works. And from there, um, the translation of that knowledge into potential therapeutics. Uh, these are uh, almost generational investments. This is what you'd be doing to invest in your children. Well, for, for me as a patient who's been on, you know, TNF therapies and many of these biologic uh, therapies, it's really very encouraging to see the work that you guys are doing and to, and to now get to be a part of that. Um, because for me, it very much is a, a generational issue as well. Um, so it's very encouraging <laughs> to be a patient on this side of things too. Well, I think you make a very important Point, and that is that the patient really is a component, a major component in the process of developing new therapeutics. It's not just the, you know, scientists working in the laboratory. It takes a full community to do it. So how does the study of immunology relate to arthritis then specifically? Well, that's a very good point. So the immune system is your defense against infectious disease, but it's also a defense system against um, mutations that arise in cells of our body and turn into cancer. So the immune system actually does both. It, it protects us against pathogens on the external environment, but also internally. And the process of inflammation is designed to sort of contain a, a pathogen at a particular area. And so when it, the immune system goes awry and gets into a joint, it causes the inflammation, the swelling, the increased number of white blood cells that move into that joint um, and it produces a lot of uh, uh, molecules that cause uh, tissue destruction and it becomes very painful. The nerves in and around that area sense that inflammation and they respond um, telling the brain, hey, I'm hurting. So from what you're describing, you know, you're, you're not looking to necessarily just look at arthritis. A lot of these things that you're looking at have the potential to really 
help a lot of different disease states um, from, from what I'm hearing from you. So how can the work that you're doing potentially look and benefit so many varied uh, disease states? Understanding the immune system, the first thing is that it is a complex uh, system. Like I said, it's not limited to specific organs. It, it circulates throughout your entire body through your blood vascular system and then it moves into the lymphatic system and that's where most of the cells, the white blood cells reside are in your lymph nodes and spleen, uh, tonsils and adenoids, your uh, Peyer's patches that line the intestinal tract. This is the organ systems of the immune system but those cells are constantly circulating. They go through every part of your body looking for uh, abnormal cells, looking for viruses, controlling the microbiome in your intestinal tract so it doesn't spread into internal organs. That's what it's designed to do and it does it very effectively in that. The TNF inhibitors, for example, help people with rheumatoid arthritis. It helps about 30-40% of the patients. But the rest of the patients only have a partial response or no response at all. So that tells us right there that rheumatoid arthritis, as we see it, as a physician would see it, it's caused by different processes. Um, that's an important point and something that we're still investigating uh, to find out what are the other causes of, or, uh, of rheumatoid arthritis that are not related to tumor necrosis factor. They also help people with psoriatic diseases, skin inflammation. And they also work in patients that have inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and colitis. So here's an example of where a drug that was initially um, uh, identified that would help rheumatoid arthritis has huge impact in other autoimmune diseases. Um, so I was reading a little bit about your research um, and looking at viruses and seeing what you can learn from viruses. So I, I think it's a really interesting idea, you know, for um, people to kind of consider that we can actually learn from viruses. So can you explain that to, the, to us, how you can potentially learn from them? Viral pathogens have evolved over eons in animal systems and, and they've developed tricks to be successful viruses. You have to infect a person and get to the next person and they have to overcome the immune system. And so in our research we've studied uh, a group of viruses known as herpes viruses. It turns out they're like a little treasure trove of how to modulate the immune system. And they have a probably, depending on which uh, virus you look at, 30 or 40 genes that are all involved in manipulating the immune response. And so we've taken several cues from those viruses and, um, and used them to help dissect how the immune system functions. And with that, we've uh, identified some potential new ways of altering inflammatory processes. Even though it might sound very esoteric to study a virus like cytomegalovirus and what's that got to do with arthritis, turns out it uses the same mechanisms that go awry in arthritis. Uh, the virus uses uh, uh, covertly to trick the immune system. And so we're trying to take that knowledge and turn it and translate it into therapeutics to treat pa patients with autoimmune disease. Now, what, what led you to start looking at the herpes virus specifically? Was it just because of the mechanism of the virus, or is there any sort of correlation to arthritis and sort of how it functions? It's completely independent. As it turns out, uh, some of the herpes viruses target um, the communicating molecules related to tumor necrosis factor. And we had uncovered a few of those viral proteins and learned how they actually modulate these tumor necrosis factors. And uh, from that knowledge, we've now translated that into potential new therapeutic. Hmm, that's really interesting. And so by sort of learning from nature, does that change how the drugs and potential therapies will work in the future. Is it, will there be less immunosuppression or will, will that affect these, uh, you know, the way the treatments work in the future by essentially trying to mimic nature? Well, in one sense, you're right, because most of our drugs that dampen inflammation are very broad acting. They dampen the inflammatory system to the point where you actually become more susceptible to infectious disease and the goal that we want to achieve is to dampen the immune system so it no longer attacks the joints in rheumatoid arthritis. 
that leaves the rest of the immune system intact to fight off infectious disease because that's something you do every day. One thing I read about, you know, and I know is kind of a hot button topic right now is precision medicine. So can you sort of explain um, to our viewers what precision medicine is uh, and why it's important uh, to approach, you know, medicine that way? Well, so the point being, uh, when we talked about uh, TNF inhibitors working in about a third of the patients with rheumatoid arthritis, well, that's two thirds that doesn't work very well and are not at all. So ideally, what we'd like to be able to do is, you know, it is to predict who's going to respond and who's not going to respond. And one of the most insightful ways that we can approach that now is by understanding the genetic background of an individual. What are the variations they have in their genes that might lead them to have psoriasis versus Crohn's disease? That's a major issue. And so, um, again, identifying those variations may help us pinpoint uh, with high precision what therapy is going to work for um, a given person so that they don't have to go through trying all the drugs that are out there. They, we can go right for the one that's going to have the major impact. Which is such a novel idea and it excites me for, for someone personally who's, I'm now just starting my seventh biologic. So the idea of precision medicine is really something that personally gives me hope for the future. I think it gives hope for everybody. Mm -hmm. The industry, because you know, it takes big investment to uh, go in that particular uh, direction and, and they want to have the evidence that it's going to work in the long run. So a normal productive life with hope and, um, you know, uh, and gusto so that uh, life is really worth living in that, in that sense. So I think that's the most important thing and we have many more tools currently today than we did just five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're on that path, uh, but we're not there yet. I'd like to thank Dr. Carl Ware for chatting with me today and explaining a little bit about his research in immunology and how that relates to the future of arthritis treatment. For future episodes of Arthritis Now, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here. And please join the conversation both on Instagram and Twitter by using the hashtag CureArthritis. We'll see you next time for Arthritis Now.